Hey YouTube, welcome to another filter cut up video. Today I've got one from Mobile One that I wanna look at. As always, this applies to the same vehicle as all the other filters I've looked at so far. So if you check out any of my other videos, just know that this is an apples to apples kind of comparison. So Mobile One offers only one filter for any type of vehicle that you might have, and it's their extended performance filter. And that's pretty similar to Royal Purple's approach. They only offer their one, their one option there. So I kinda like that when you only have one good option, it makes choosing what you're gonna buy pretty simple. So that's, that's pretty cool. But what they really advertise for this filter is their warranty of up to one year or 20,000 miles between oil changes, whichever comes first. Now, that's quite a long ways to go between oil changes, and I'm not really here to debate whether or not that's a good idea or not. I think that's pretty far. But what I really do want to cover when I review these guys is just the build quality. How are they manufactured and what kind of attention to detail are they putting into these things when they make them? So that's really what I'm, I'm here to talk about, not so much my philosophy on how far you should, should push your filter before you just change it out. Anyway, just a quick note, this is actually a little bit of a newer revision of their extended performance filter. The older version did not have the A suffix at the end of their model number, and their cover, their warranty only protected you for up to 15,000 miles. So just know that if you have the A at the end, you've got the newer version. And just a quick detail on their warranty, there are some caveats with that. You have to use a certain type of synthetic oil for that warranty to apply. So if you actually want details on that, go ahead to Mobile One's website and check that out. But to talk about the filter itself, let me start off by getting the weight here. It comes in at 302 grams, which is healthy. It's pretty competitive with all the other quality offerings from the competition. Now the heaviest I've ever seen was from a Bosch Distance Plus and a Pure Later Boss that both came in at around 350 and those were pretty much clones of each other so you'd expect them to be the same but everybody else for their quality stuff has been around 300 so that's, that's a nice healthy weight there. Now to talk about the case, I've generally seen two case thicknesses, in fact I've only seen two case thicknesses, there's 15 thousandths and then the heavier 20 thousandths thickness. And I think we're gonna see that this is the heavier gauge. So I'm gonna pay attention to that when I cut this open. But looking at the underside, the tapping plate here, if you watched my last video on Royal Purple, you're gonna see that this looks awfully familiar. Check this out, this one here is the Royal Purple tapping plate. They both have the same five hole pattern with the one larger hole here at the top for whatever reason, I'm still not sure why that is. But they have that, they have the little Y stamp here down at four o'clock. They both have four and a half threads on their center hole, and they both share the same gasket and gasket track design. Now I actually like this gasket design quite a bit because unlike the rectangular cross sections of their gaskets that you see on the competition, this guy's got a little bit of an unusual shape to it. It's rounded here on the engine side with a lip on the ID, and the back side is nice and flat. Now what that does is having that lip on the ID it engages this undercut on the ID of the track and keeps it mechanically locked so it's not going to come out even if you just are trying to pry it out with your fingers you really got to get a tool under it to get it out now I think that's just a little bit better design than the rectangular ones that are just kind of pinched so there's maybe a little bit more of a risk of them coming out not that it's a big deal but I, I, I think I prefer this so that's pretty much everything on the exterior there is to talk about now, in addition to the tapping plate being the same between the Royal Purple and the Mobile One, I think they also share the same case, and we're even going to probably see that they share the same emergency bypass valve design on the inside, which I really like, so that's a good thing. But if you've got the if you if you're kind of thinking that these are 100% clones of each other, I don't think so. I think we're going to find out that the actual filter cartridge on the inside is in fact different. So I'm going to get to that and cut this guy open now so we can take, take a closer look. Okay, now I've got the filter cut open. I threw some mics on the wall of the case and did uh, confirm that it is the heavier gauge at 20,000 thick. I'm always glad to see that. Now the spring and the anti-drain back valve and the base plate are all common to the Royal Purple filter as well, so I'm not really gonna cover those. Now the colors might be different, but that's really about it, so there's not much to discuss there. But the first thing I want I do want to cover in detail is the emergency bypass valve design, which I'm really impressed with. So I want to go into a little bit of detail on that and why. The first reason I like it so much is that the seal is made out of rubber, which is a nice soft material that will 
conform to the mating piece and close up any gaps if there are any. Now, in contrast, I have seen, like on this Wix XP here, seals made from a hard material. This might be a hard plastic or something, I'm not sure. But when you have two rigid pieces trying to mate together, nothing's really all that apt to give to close up any gaps. So I feel more comfortable that this provides a good seal versus maybe something harder. The other thing I like is that immediately behind that, uh, rubber uh, seal is this stamped sheet metal support plate that is meant to keep that seal flat from warping or wrinkling as it moves up and down as needed. Now, to K&N's credit, they do a good job on their uh, performance silver filter by also having you know, a nice piece of uh, rubber for their seal, but instead of having a dedicated support plate, they just throw an extra coil on the end of their spring. Now, I'm sure that works, but I really think this is kind of taking quality to just one greater level when they have a dedicated piece that spreads across the entire surface of that that um, seal. So really glad to see that. While I've got the uh, end cap assembly in my hand here, I do want to also point out their gluing job. They've got a lot of glue, plenty of it, but almost too much. If you look and see, it's almost crept up to the point where it interferes with the seal on that valve, so I would be kind of wary of that if I was in charge of manufacturing that. But what all this glue also does is it also kind of spills over onto the <laughs> over the lip of this end cap, and you can even see a bunch got on the bottom here. Now I don't think that hurts performance at all, and I complained about this in the Royal Purple because theirs is the same thing, but it just doesn't really, I don't know, doesn't really make me feel like they paid attention to that extra level of detail that I would have liked to see, but anyway. Where these filters really get interesting and where they start diverging in their what they offer is in the cartridges themselves. You can immediately tell that these are very different. Now, the first thing I want to point out is the center tube. The center tube on the Mobile One is made out of steel and it's the helical spiral design. You can see the seal running up along, along the edge there. Now I do believe this has been upgraded maybe over the previous uh, revision that I talked about earlier. I haven't seen it so I can't say for sure, but I think that was one thing they might have also paid attention to at this latest iteration. Now that's going to be a lot stronger than kind of the more basic design that the Royal Purple has where they have a single axial fold. So it's going to be definitely a stronger center, center tube for what it's worth. So that's a plus for the Mobile One. But as far as the filter media itself goes, you can immediately see that the Mobile One foregoes the wire backing, but what that does is it allows them to jam a whole lot more pleats into the same area and give you a greater overall surface area for your filter, okay? There's 63 pleats on here, and the media is a synthetic blend that is rated for 99 plus percent efficiency down to 30 microns. In comparison, the Royal Purple has a fully synthetic media that is 99% efficient down to 25 microns, which is better. Now, whether or not that 5 microns means a whole lot to you, I can't really say, but if, that, if it does, then that might steer you in the direction of, of Royal Purple. Something else I want to point out is that where the folds in their media come together and meet, you can see here that they're kind of... Uh, sandwiched together and probably glued at this seam. I guess the seam ends or starts right around there. We got the same thing going on with the Royal Purple where here's where the, where their uh, media, the ends of their media come together. Now I wish I had seen on both of these the metal crimp that you get from some other other brands like the K&N here. They've got this nice metal, metal crimp on the end that I don't know, just kind of another level of quality that I, I wish we had seen, given how expensive these are. These filters, especially if you order them online and have them shipped to your house, you, you're talking maybe around 15 bucks for these. So these, these aren't cheap filters by any means. Finally, in terms of uh, dirt capacity for these, for these guys, I have not been able to find a whole lot of information that's been published about that. Royal Purple doesn't really talk about it on their website, and Mobile One, at best, kind of is vague about it. They say... Synthetic blend media keeps oil cleaner and holds more dirt. Okay, well, versus economy filter brands per ISO, this and that. Well, 
economy filter brands, well, what does that mean? That's not very specific. So the best I can go off of is the fact that they've got so much surface area and they wouldn't very well be able to rate their filter to go for 20,000 miles if they didn't have the dirt capacity to support that kind of use. So I imagine it's good, but I can't really say for sure because I don't have published numbers. But that's pretty much everything technical I had to discuss with these guys. I hope you liked it. If you guys want to see another brand or another particular model of filter that you want me to cut up and review, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to it. Also, just any questions in general, uh, leave them in the comments below. I would appreciate it if you'd subscribe and thank you so much for watching.